Hey everyone, check this out. This is the Electric Expedition cargo bike. I gotta give it up to Electric. They're always coming out with something new to fit each and every single type of rider out there, whether it be somebody that needs a small portable electric light, the 3.0 for like an average, really cost effective folding e-bike, the Electric X Premium Mid-Drive for those of you that want a mid-drive bike, and now this Expedition. And I gotta tell you, there's already a ton of features on this thing that I absolutely already love. The first being that it has dual 14 amp hour batteries. Now you can purchase this bike with either a single battery or a dual, but to be honest, if I were you, I would go for the dual battery option because it's only $300 more. And if you bought that 14 amp hour battery by itself, right now on their website, it's $500. So that's like a $200 cost savings if you get the bike right off the bat with dual batteries. The next awesome feature that I absolutely love is this adjustable stem on the front here. You just push this button in, flip it up, and these handlebars roll down, roll back, gives you a further reach, a closer reach, a higher reach, rolls the handlebars all with one push of a button, which is awesome. One other cool feature I forgot that I wanna mention is these quick release pedals. They are awesome pedals, really grippy, and I love that they're quick release. And I don't wanna forget this part, Electric finally put a 750 watt motor in this bike and it peaks out at 13, whoa. Well, very windy here today, guys. That's why you gotta watch that dual kickstand in the grass. So anyway, that's why you're gonna wanna watch one of these dual kickstands in the grass. It's a little bit soft here, and it's actually winter time, but a beautiful day here today, 70 degrees. And uh, the next feature that's nice is the dual kickstand for when you have a heavy load on the back, your bike won't wanna tip over as easy because the kickstand will take the heavy load, but you can see there, it's just digging into the ground there. So maybe that's one thing that would have been nice to see was would be maybe bigger feet on the kickstand to give you a better stance on softer ground. But to be honest, their regular kickstand wouldn't have held up on this ground either. I have bikes fall over all the time with regular kickstands when it's windy like this. But back to the motor, 750 watt motor peaking at 1310 watts and it has a 24 amp controller which is awesome so you know we're going to be testing this power out this bike they told me to take up any hill that i wouldn't be disappointed that it'd be hard to find one that i could make it up so you better believe we're going to test that out now the hill that i normally go up on the grassy test i might have to do that later on in the video because they are playing a softball game and i don't want to interrupt them but let's get on to the other hill test that i go up in all my rides initially and this bike better make it up that hill with just throttle because almost all my 750 watt bikes will make it up that hill with throttle the electric 3.0 will make it up at four miles per hour so we're going to see how fast this one will go and then we're going to come back go over all the specs and features about this bike and i'll talk about some of them throughout the video as i'm riding let's get into it oh almost forgot if you find this video helpful please consider hitting the thumbs up button, leave me a comment down below because it really helps my channel out. And if you want to learn about e-bikes and enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And if you decide that this bike is something that would be right for you after watching the video, please use the link down in the description and I will make a small commission, which is what helps support the channel and helps me keep creating these videos for you. And there will also be links down there for all my accessories like my bike bags, uh, bell air tag holders and all kinds of other stuff. So make sure you guys check that out as well. Now let's get into it. So they did not skimp on this bike. This bike is rocking hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear. And I don't know if they heard me about my last uh, 3.0 video where I complained about the brakes, but these ones are quiet as can be. So this is the hill I go up in all my tests. We are gonna go up this in pedal assist five, throttle only, and see how fast we can make it up this hill. Like I said, none of the other electrics really made it up this with just throttle only. The 3.0 did at four miles an hour, but normally I would start pedaling when it hit four miles an hour. So let's see how this expedition will do with just throttle only. 12, 10, nine, hit a little bump there, eight, nine awesome guys never dropped below eight miles an hour that was only for a split second basically almost held at nine miles an hour so yeah guys definitely good power out of the 750 watt motor with the 24 amp controller 
Got to give that one an A+. Now all they have to do is put this motor in their uh, electric 3.0. I already mentioned it to them. This motor and this controller, and that would be sweet, guys. Let me know down below what you think. Do you think that would be a good upgrade? So you can see here, very short reach on these handlebars, the way I have them adjusted. If you were a taller rider, then you can adjust these handlebars down. I'll show you guys later on. And you can have a lot further reach. The seat height on this, a minimum seat height of 32 inches and a maximum seat height of 49 inches. Huge. I don't know why you would even put it that high, to be honest. Uh, way higher than I would ever need or probably most riders would ever need. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It has dual adjustability on this seat post, so you could get that seat super high. So very nice on the brakes here. And we'll test out some of the speeds down here on the level. Very nice with just the back brakes. All right, so here we go, pedal assist one. And the first thing I wanna mention is that on this model, and I believe it's gonna be the same on their trike that they're coming out with, the throttle is limited to your pedal assist level. So you can see here, they kind of have it programmed differently now. On pedal assist one, the max current that you are gonna get out of this motor in pedal assist one is four amps. Now that's gonna give you way more range when you're riding. You can see the throttle, I mean, it still does get you up to that 20 miles per hour but you just don't have the full power of it. So the throttle's kind of limited to your pedal assist levels, not by speed, but by current. So you're not gonna gain more than four amps of current in pedal assist one, but you can still travel at 20 miles per hour if you're on level ground, but you would have to pretty much bump up into different pedal assist levels to have power. You can see I'm going up this hill here, only gonna give me four amps of current in one bump it up to two it's going to give you about 10 amps of current in two same with throttle bump it up into three and it will give you 14 amps of current good power though guys i'm barely pedaling here let's just do throttle gonna bump it up into four 20 amps of current with throttle or pedaling bump it up to five and 24 amps of current, which is what the controller is rated for. So you're not gonna get the full amount of current until you're in pedal assist five. Kind of nice the way they have it set up. You could probably get tons of range being that this has 28 amp hour battery capacity with the dual batteries and the way they have this programmed, you should get a massive amount of distance out of this bike. So I'm not gonna be able to do a range test today because unfortunately I'll be out of time. Uh, it's a weekday, I do have a day job and it's gonna be dark soon so there's no way I could drain this battery today. Right now I'm in pedal assist five full throttle and I was hitting about 18 miles an hour there. So it seems like it could have been a little bit faster with throttle on there. We'll check it again once we get down onto a more of a straight stretch. We're gonna be testing out max speed. I do have this bike currently unlocked to a class three e-bike, which is 28 miles per hour, but it is still limited, limited on your throttle to 20 miles per hour, and that's the legal limit. So 20 miles per hour with throttle, 28 with pedals, but we're gonna be testing that for sure. So far, really nice. I love the extra carrying capacity on this bike. Huge rack in the back. Trying to grab both brakes here, guys. Going down this hill. Very, very quiet brakes. And on this bike, unlike a lot of their other bikes, both batteries are external behind the seat. So it's gonna be really easy for you to remove those batteries. They weigh seven pounds a piece. And if you were putting this bike on a bike rack, if you left the seat in, it puts the bike down to 61 pounds if you take the batteries out. So that's gonna be quick and easy to take them out if you need to load this up on a bike rack. And like I said, seven pounds a piece for the batteries. With both batteries installed, the bike weighs 75 pounds. 
and I believe like 68 with just one battery. All right, so I could smell them brakes. Whew, that was a long hill. Smell them brakes burning a little bit, and usually they do coming down that hill. Probably an organic style pad. That's probably why they're so quiet. So here we go, 20 miles per hour, throttle only. Glad that dog's chained up. 19, I'm gonna start pedaling and it takes off. <laughs> Shift up here. And the next thing you will notice, 23 miles an hour and how I'm pedaling. This does have an 11 to 28 freewheel on the back, which is awesome. I'm glad they're including that now on all their bikes, starting with the 3.0. You can see I don't have much ghost pedaling here. 23, 24, 25. This is how you'll be pedaling at 26, 27, 28. So not much ghost pedaling. Really nice that you're not going to have to change that free wheel out. Now there is no suspension on this bike other than the little bit of cushion you do get with the 20 by 3 inch tires. Uh, depending what you have the air pressure set at. I think right now I have them set at 20 PSI's. I would highly recommend a suspension seat post in this bike. If you don't mind the extra three to four inches it adds, if you can uh, afford to add that extra few inches, then I would definitely recommend either the Suntour, I believe it's the NCX 12 seat post. That's one of my favorites, around $100, $120. And I'll put links to that below in the description or the Redshift suspension seat post. That one's awesome as well, but it's almost double the money. Can't go wrong with either. And the Cloud9 seat is still my favorite. I don't know what's going on here with these cars, trying to pass each other. I don't know what's up with all these cars on this road today, guys. Usually there's hardly any on these backcountry roads. So let's try a throttle only here. I'm on a straight stretch and see what kind of speed we can get. Then we're gonna bump it up. Well, it's already bumped up. Pedal assist five. So it's looking like 19 miles an hour with just throttle. Yeah, 19 miles an hour with just throttle. I would have Hoped for another one to two miles per hour out of just throttle. Let's try just pedaling. And you'll see my cadence here when I'm at full speed. 26, 27. Cadence is really nice, not really running out of pedal right now. Tell you one thing, the motor is definitely louder than the 3.0. So 27 miles an hour. I would say it would probably hit 28 if it wasn't so windy. Very windy day today. But safe to say at least 27 miles per hour. Which is pretty good. Class 3 is 28. So it's right in there within a mile per hour. And that's going to depend on your weight too. Right now I'm about 100 and... 75 to 180 pounds during this test, so keep that in mind. Bunch of joggers today. Like I said, beautiful day today for February. Uh, almost 70 degrees, which is unheard of here. Can't believe the nice weather we've had here in the winter. I actually left work a little early to film this video because it's just such a beautiful day. They were, they were nice enough to let me out of work early. Yeah, definitely a lot more noise than the 3.0. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. So just throttle here, 19. We're going to hit this little hill here. And let's see how we can do with just throttle up this hill. Still pedal assist 5. Fifteen doesn't look like it's going to drop below fifteen miles an hour. Pretty nice. Definitely, definitely a lot more power 
than the 3.0. All right, so I stopped to take a little break here, guys. Let's go over all the specs and features of the electric expedition and see what all you get with it. The price point of this bike is $13.99 with one battery and $16.99 with the dual battery. And like I mentioned, definitely well worth getting the second battery. Now these are 14 amp hours a piece for a total of 48 volt, 28 amp hours and that's going to get you a massive distance and what's also nice is i believe these batteries will work on the rear of the x premium and the x premium rear battery will work on here as well now the controller on this bike is down below the frame here it's a totally different style controller than all their other bikes it's weather resistant and 24 amps don't even need to take this one out i could see the rating right here really nice it's going to stay nice and cool down there up inside the frame here, you do have, I believe, a battery blender. Your wires go up inside your frame here and connect to that. That's what enables both these batteries to work. Now, if you get the bike with just one battery, I'm not 100% sure that blender comes with it or not. I would assume so, but don't quote me on that. That may be something you want to ask. That way, if you do add the second battery in the future, you need to, you'll know whether or not you have to purchase that. But I'm pretty sure that it probably I would assume would come in there, but would be something worth checking on if you were considering only one battery. So that massive battery power will power the 750 watt rear hub motor. Really nice to see they upgraded the 750 watts there with a peak output of 1310 watts. And as you guys can see here, massive carrying capacity on the back. I could actually slide this bag up a lot further if I wanted to. I kept it back here to wrap these straps around this bar. That's how you're supposed to do it so your bag don't slide off. But I could put this bag all the way up close to the seat and honestly could probably almost put a second bag on here if I wanted to. All right, so this is what's awesome about this long rack. You can see here I have two bags on this rack. Now these are my favorite bags. This one's made by Rock Bros. This one's made by Vitalin both identical on quality. So I would take a look and see which one's cheaper if you guys are deciding on bags. And I'll put links down below to both. But what's really awesome is these fold down to paneer bags, as you've seen in most of my other videos. And essentially you can have paneers on both sides if you have two of these bags on. Now that's massive storage capacity on this cargo bike if you need it. Have your water bottle holder here. You could probably squeeze another one down in here but that's what is amazing. And these don't really get in the way of hitting your feet either. If you had dual bags on, it seems like the paneers would probably just clear your ankles there, but really nice. And being that they have the plexiglass already built in the sides there, you don't have to worry about your bags going in and hitting your rims. Really nice for extra cargo carrying capacity out on the bike trail or just whatever. So while we're talking about the back of the bike, you can get some different accessories for this, which I do have and I will be showing you guys probably in another video of those. But you could get what's called a one-up chair, which is a chair that goes on the back with some armrests. And you do get a set of foot rests here that slide into these holes right here. A really nice big platform for their feet. And whenever you get this bike, it does come with plastic or plexiglass looks like uh, sheets in here so that's really nice that that already comes in there if you're riding a kid on the back that was always my main concern about their feet getting stuck in here now there is a little hole right here would have been nice to see this piece of plexiglass come down here to cover this little hole they could probably still get their foot through this little hole so maybe that would have been a nice upgrade there in the future to make that a little bigger on this side you don't have to worry about it because you have the hydraulic brake caliper blocking that hole there's really no way they're going to get their foot in there. Really nice though that it does come with this and that they didn't make you pay extra for that. But make sure you guys stick around to see them packages to see if they are right for you because they do seem pretty neat. Up here on the handlebars, they have the same rubber grips as the 3.0. Same control pad here for controlling your different pedal assist levels. Over here on the right hand side, you have a half grip twist throttle and a seven speed Shimano shifter leading down to the 11 to 28 tooth freewheel in the rear of the bike. It is using a Shimano Tourney derailleur, which is just entry level, but works just fine. Coming up this very, very long chain here to a 52 tooth chain ring in the front and a set of detachable pedals. Really nice pedals, really good grip on these studs here. A lot better than their folding pedals in my opinion, and you can remove the whole pedal, which is really nice. 
And one thing about this derailleur, it does not include a derailleur guard. So as you can see here, when the bike fell over, it actually did hit this derailleur. Didn't seem to hurt it, but that would have been nice to see some sort of derailleur guard. Not sure if they left that off there so that it didn't get in the way of this foot platform. But if you do have these platforms on, that would actually act as a derailleur guard itself if you do purchase that rear seat with those platforms. For safety, this bike has a nice headlight up front and a tail light in back, but it is not a brake light. That would have been nice to see them include a brake light so when you pull the brake lever, it gets brighter or flashes. Now the wiring up front is wrapped really nicely. Coming down, some of the wires go into the frame and some of them go underneath. Now with this whole tube being hollow and nothing really inside of it other than that battery blender, it would have been nice to see these wires routed into the frame here as well and come back out the bottom down there just to keep it a little bit cleaner looking. But it is wrapped all the way down there, so it's still pretty nice looking. Just would have been a little cleaner if they were actually inside the frame tube there. A little easier maintenance like this though, if you did have a problem down the road getting to some of your wiring. But overall, everything's tied up really nicely on the wiring. Good job, Electric. This bike is sitting on a pair of 20 by three inch slick tires and it does include a set of front and rear metal fenders. Now those fenders are gonna be a little bit noisy if you're running over gravel and these tires are picking up the gravel, hitting them. Haven't really heard anything on this trip. Now, as you can tell, this bike does not fold in half, but the handlebar stem does fold down in case you had to put it in back of your vehicle or in an SUV. That makes it a little bit shorter, but it is gonna be a little bit longer, obviously, because it is a cargo bike. I mean, you do have to give it some kind of trade-off for it being able to carry that much capacity. It has a set of mounts up here, probably for a water bottle holder, locks and things like that. And it also has a set on the rear seat tube, which is really nice. This electric expedition has a rider capacity weight rating of 330 pounds. The bike itself with rider and cargo has a max weight rating of 450 pounds. The rear rack can hold 300 pounds and if you purchase their additional front rack it can hold 35 pounds but overall rider and cargo maximum weight rating 450 pounds and the step over height on this bike is 18 and three quarter inches from the ground up all right so let's go find that steepest hill in my town and see how this bike will go up it and i'm going to try to go throttle up it only when we get there so let's see if it'll do it All right, here we go up the steepest hill in my town. I'm gonna try throttle only all the way up this hill and let's see if it makes it all the way to the top. 10, nine, 24 amps of current, eight, seven, six. God, six miles an hour, never drop below six. That's up the steepest hill in my town. That's some good power right there. Now, I would recommend still pedaling a little bit to help up that hill, but to make it up that hill with just throttle only six miles an hour, pretty good in my opinion. All right, here we go. Last long hill before my house. Now I'm gonna stay in gear seven, which is the absolute hardest gear to pedal in on this bike. And we're gonna see how it does going up this hill. I'm in pedal assist five, it's pumping out 24, amps of current and guys i'm walking right up this without putting hardly any effort in at all very nice very easy up this hill in gear seven now i could gear down to gear one and really give it some good mechanical input more mechanical advantage gearing down if i had a heavy load maybe i would have to or a heavy uh, rider on the back but man this thing definitely has some good power right up this hill no problem seventh gear 
and we're gonna check steep grassy hill again and see if there's steel softball players there. If there's not, you better believe we're gonna test it up that hill. Now my battery's not 100% full right now, so I may have to try that test again later, but I'm definitely gonna try that test with this bike to see if it'll make it all the way up over that hill. Not sure if it will or not. So we're gonna find out on the next dry day that there's no softball players there, but I'll keep you guys updated either down below in the comments if it made it, or you guys can always ask. It's always good to leave comments on my videos anyway, or I'll make an Instagram reel about it. So make sure you guys follow me on Instagram and then uh, you'll be able to see some future videos, some previews and things like that. If you guys do have an Instagram and want to follow me, I'd appreciate it. And there will be a link down below for that as well. So I'm going to hang on with two hands here because you never know when a deer is going to run out. But let's try the initial hill that I went up. Let's try that hill again with just throttle. I'll be there in a second. And uh, we'll see if we can make it all the way up that hill again with just throttle after an eight and almost, probably eight and a half miles by the time we get there. We'll see if it'll make it up again. All right, so we're approaching the hill that I do all my first tests with, with a full battery. Let's see if it'll do it now after 8.4 miles. And when I get to the top, we'll see what my battery level is at voltage wise, because I'm still 100% according to the bars. So 13, 12, 11, 10, nine, eight. Right here is where the electric 3.0 hit four miles an hour. We're still holding eight, seven, eight. It just dropped to seven real quick. So very nice guys, very nice. Let's stop here and see what the battery voltage is at. Battery voltage is still at 51.4 volts out of 54.6 would be fully charged. So, and that is after 8.5 miles of riding. All right, I'm gonna have to do this grassy hill test another day and get back to you. There's still a lot of people around here, a lot of cars and don't wanna interrupt anybody. So we'll do that test another day and we'll see if we can make it up that steep grassy hill. And make sure you guys stick around to see that. All right, everyone, so I got all three lined up against the wall here. I got the electric Expedition, electric X Premium, and electric 3.0. 3.0 is about three inches shorter than the Expedition. And the X Premium is about three inches longer than the Expedition. And now I have the handlebars pretty much lined up. I have the Expedition handlebars all the way up and back. And it's about the same height as the 3.0 handlebars when they're in the all the way down position. But what I want you to notice here, there's about three inches less reach when you're sitting on the Expedition to the handlebars than the 3.0. I always thought the 3.0 had a short handlebar reach. The Expedition is definitely shorter, would be better for shorter riders. All right, everyone, I made it back home safe and sound. In a follow-up video or a live stream, I'm gonna show you guys the optional orbiter and the one-up seat or whatever it's called that you guys can purchase to put on the back of here with the feet platform things. So if you guys wanna see that, if you wanna see a live stream, if you're interested in one of those, maybe let me know down below, or like I said, a follow-up video, and I will be showing you that here. So if you found this video helpful and decide you wanna pick up one of these bikes for yourself, please consider, like I said earlier, the link down in the description where I will make a small commission and it helps support me making these videos for all of you. And to be honest, guys, there's really not a whole lot about this bike not to like. I mean, it has hydraulic brakes. It has a massive battery capacity, a US-based company, 24 amp controller, has good power to that 750 watt motor. Really nice adjustability on the stem. I love the detachable pedals. I mean, they just have a lot going for them on this model, guys. And I really enjoyed testing it out. I'm definitely going to be adding a suspension seat post to it in the future and I'll put down below all the links to the things that I recommend like that bag cell phone holders and stuff like that like I said earlier so please make sure you guys check those out and use those links as well and please consider subscribing I'll see you guys around on the next one if you have any questions or just want to leave a comment in general please do because it really helps out and I will see you all around on the next one thanks for watching everyone